finest modeling of the players and setting and the greatest audience involvement result when the camera is brought as close as possible to record the scene without distorting the images. In other words, move the camera in and use the widest lens you can. Now, fashions and theories change, and I'm not going to suggest that there are rules like this in books like this that must be followed. But what is important is that we learn how moving the camera and changing our point of view can alter what we photograph. Here, the camera operator is filming a shot of Tom and Margaret talking to each other across a table over on the left of your screen. This is his shot, a simple two shot with the faces in profile. Now we want to see Tom's face, but still see both figures. The operator moves the camera to shoot over Margaret's shoulder. Here's the shot, a mid shot of Tom with Margaret filling the right hand side of frame. He can get a similar shot when he moves closer. And yet now Tom seems much further away. The same thing with the matching shots of Margaret. Looking over Tom's shoulder, a mid shot, and a similar shot with the camera closer to Tom and she seems paradoxically much further away. One thing is clear. We can manipulate the appearance of distance between the two figures. We can alter the third dimension. A few days ago, I came here and took two photographs with this camera. First of all, I used a wide angle lens, a 35 mil lens with a short focal length. Then I changed to a 135 mil lens, a much longer focal length with a much narrower angle of view, often loosely called a telephoto lens or misleadingly called a close-up lens. And I took two photographs of this scene. Now, We've done some blow-ups of those two shots and I want you to be able to compare them. First of all, the wide-angle shot. You can see almost all of the bridge and there's this expanse of water and the boats in the foreground to give the photograph a strong sense of depth. Now, what we've done is cut away all but the central section of the photograph showing the opera house and we've enlarged that section of the negative to produce a print which is the same size as the first. It's easy to see that the enlargement has made no difference to the relationships of the various elements in the picture. And that is what perspective is about. The apparent relationship of things to each other in space seen from one point of view. Now let's look at the shot I took with the long lens, the long focal length lens, the 135mm lens. It's identical in every respect with the blow up of the section from the wide shot, except that while I was changing lenses, this ferry moved closer to Circular Quay and one of the boats drifted slightly. Apart from that, the two shots are the same. In particular, look at the relationship of the post in the foreground to the Opera House and the Garden Island Crane, which is behind the Opera House and more than a kilometre away from it. If you compare the two photographs, you'll see that these details are identical. In fact, the only way of telling these two shots apart is the graininess of this one, where we've enlarged a very small section of the first negative. What this proves is that simply changing the focal length of the lens from short to long or anywhere in between doesn't alter perspective. And one of the commonest truisms repeated about photography, that long lenses compress space and short lenses push things apart, is stated like that, simply quite false. What they do do is cut out different size sections of the world in front of the camera. Here's another demonstration of the same principle. We fit a camera with three fixed lenses of different focal lengths, 10mm, 25mm and 50mm. The scene in front of the camera consists of a number of objects, including a black frame 
and the figure of Tom who sits reading. The camera is mounted on a dolly so that it can move towards or away from the black frame. We can compare what different lenses take and we can see what happens when we move the camera. We begin by looking at the shots taken with the three lenses. The 50mm takes this view. It records the area exactly inside the black frame. The 25mm lens has a wider angle of view, so now we can see the black frame and some space around it. The 10mm lens is a big jump, a much wider angle of view, and we see much more of the scene. But the same thing we saw with the Opera House is happening here. The different lenses are cutting out different size sections of the world, and the perspective within the black frame is not changing. When we keep the film rolling, you can see the three lenses successively sliding into place and the section of the scene cut out by the black frame, which is exactly what the 50mm lens sees, remains unchanged like a postage stamp just stuck on the scene. Only its size changes. Perspective changes when things move or you change your point of view, that is, move the camera. Now with a 10mm lens fitted, the camera will be moved closer to Tom. Two things happen. He gets larger on the screen and he appears to move away from the background. It's not a trick of the lens, it duplicates what we see with our eyes. There is a real change in perspective. When we replace the three fixed lenses with a zoom lens, we can demonstrate the same principle. But now, we can alter the scale of the image as the camera moves forward, so that we see exactly what the black frame encloses at each moment. Now the change in perspective caused by the change in the position of the camera becomes dramatically clear. In practical terms, all this means is that we keep two things in mind when manipulating depth. The distance between the camera and the subject and the focal length of the lens. A great deal of what is called distortion is, again, only a duplication of what we see. If I reach out and touch your face, you see something like this. A huge hand compared to the size of my head. But, in real life, our brains correct for the apparent distortion. What we know changes what we see. What we're dealing with here are not genuine distortions at all, but natural manifestations of perspective.